In this segment, we'll uh, start with olfactory receptors. Olfactory receptors that are responsible for perception of smell. And we know that our nose is responsible for this function. In the nasal chamber, there are three parts. The first part of the chamber is known as vestibular part, then respiratory, and the third part is known as olfactory chamber or olfactory part. So this olfactory chamber of the nasal chamber of nasal chamber has a special type of epithelium which is known as olfactory epithelium. Olfactory epithelium. There is one more term which is given to this olfactory epithelium. It is also known as nidarian membrane. Nidarian membrane. So this is the term given uh, to olfactory epithelium. Olfactory epithelium is a pseudo-stratified epithelium. Pseudo-stratified epithelium. And what exactly is a pseudo-stratified? Pseudo means false and strata means layers. So it appears as if it has layers, but actually there is no layering. All the cells, they are arranged in a single layer resting on basement membrane, but because the cells are of different size, they appear as if there are some smaller cells and above it there are some other cells. So it gives an appearance of stratification which is not there and that's why we call them pseudo stratified. The epithelium is glandular and sensory. That means sensory function, it is going to perceive that stimulus and glandular because it secretes mucus. Epithelium has two main types of cells and two other cells. So basically there are four different types of cells. We will take all these four cells. The first are called olfactory cells. These are the ones, the sensory cells. Olfactory cells, they are spindle shaped spindle shaped and they are modified bipolar neurosensory cells. Modified bipolar neurosensory cells. And all this complete epithelium, all the cells, they rest on basement membrane. So we will keep talking about all four types of cells as we draw this. So when we draw the epithelia, these are tall columnar cells. This, okay, let us write it here. This is made up of columnar cells. So epithelium is made up of columnar cells. So columnar cells means these are tall and they are spindle shaped also. So here we are drawing the olfactory cells. Each olfactory cell is spindle shaped. That means the upper end is narrow, middle is swollen, and the bottom is again narrower. So let us draw a couple of these cells, spindle shaped cells. The upper free end has stereocilia. One more spindle shaped cell here, olfactory. Upper end has a tuft of stereocilia. Normally, these cell hair, they are non-motile stereocilia. Stereocilia are sensory non-motile cilia. And they are the ones which are going to perceive the stimulus. From the other end, a nerve fiber is going to emerge. And these cells, they rest on basement membrane. So let us draw stereocilia at the upper free end and a nerve fiber arising from the lower end. 
this nerve is all of these fibers they're going to join to form the olfactory nerve the first cranial nerve which is going to go to the olfactory bulbs that is to the forebrain in the forebrain part there are olfactory lobes the olfactory bulb and olfactory tract so this nerve is a sensory nerve it is going to perceive the stimulus from here and go up to the olfactory bulb the nucleus in the olfactory cells is present in the middle solar part the space between these cells is filled with again tall cells which are non-sensory so that is the second type of cells we are writing those here the second type of cells are known as supporting cells as the na name tells us supporting their function is only to fill the gap to keep all the olfactory uh, cells in their position so here we have these supporting cells these are also tall cells columnar cells and in between the olfactory cells so this is how these cells are going to be they are non-sensory their nuclei are at the bottom so these are the supporting cells they do not have any stereocilia or any nerve fiber arising their function is only to support these cells now the fourth type of cells are known as sorry the third type of cells are known as basal cells basal cells these are small cells which will give rise to the olfactory cells small and give rise to olfactory olfactory cells olfactory cells have a lifespan of about two months so olfactory cells they are replaced every two months so few more things about olfactory cells here the life is two months and the new olfactory cells would be produced by these basal cells so these basal cells they are small and they are present here at the lower part so here are these basal cells at the bottom part and now if we look at this entire structure it appears as if there are two layers of cells some because the nuclei are at the bottom so it appears these are different cells and these nuclei in the upper part or the middle part it appears as if there are few more cells here so these are basal cells now let us talk about mucus glands the fourth type are mucus glands these mucus glands are also known as bowman's glands bowman's glands and as the name tells us their function is to secrete mucus so these mucus cells they are deep so here we would draw one mucus cell which is coming up to the inner part and it goes up like this so here or let me make it a little wider so that we can make the cells so here are all the cells of the mucus gland and all these cells are going to produce mucus so now let me change the label here this is the olfactory nerve which is arising from these olfactory cells and this is the mucus gland mucus gland the mucus is secreted by these cells and this mucus is going to come on the surface so this is the mucus so structurally the olfactory epithelium or nadarian epithelium or nadarian membrane has four types of cells the primary cells are the olfactory cells which are sensory they are modified by polar neurosensory cells the upper end has a tuft of stereocilia stereocilia are non-motile and they are sensory in nature 
from the lower end arises a nerve fiber all these fibers are going to join to form the olfactory nerve this olfactory nerve is going to go to the olfactory bulb to perceive the or to detect the sense of smell to support these cells there are some again tall columnar cells which we have drawn in red they are non sensory their function is only to provide support to those long tall columnar olfactory cells there are some smaller cells which are at the bottom part just above the basement membrane these cells are called basal cells this smaller one is the basal cell and function of basal cell is to produce new olfactory cells so we can say they basically acting as stem cells to produce olfactory cells olfactory cells have a life span of about 2 months every 2 months they get replaced and the new cells would be produced from <coughs> sorry the basal cell the fourth type of cells are called mucus cells or mucus glands another name given is bowman's gland function they produce or secrete mucus so there is a layer of mucus which is on this upper surface these olfactory cells these are actually chemoreceptors they are chemoreceptors chemo receptors chemoreceptors means they are going to perceive the chemicals now what is going to happen how this sense of smell will be detected when we inhale all those aromatic particles which are in the air they come and dissolve in this mucus so whenever something some aromatic particle goes into our nose it is going to dissolve in this mucus as soon as it dissolves and triggers these stereocilia an impulse is generated and this impulse will be taken by the olfactory nerve to the olfactory lobe and that is how we are able to detect the smell in case of human beings there are about 2 million olfactory cells the number of olfactory cells is about 2 million in case of humans it is much higher in animals like dogs who can even differentiate between the body odors they can differentiate or identify a person from the smell of the body we can also distinguish hundreds of different smells but the sense of smell or this olfactory perception in dogs is much much better as compared to humans now this is how the membrane is and the working is very simple the the chemicals we can call these as the chemicals and these are aromatic chemicals the chemicals which have some kind of smell when they dissolve in the mucus stimulate the stereocilia that is how we are able to detect the smell there is a very special property of these olfactory cells they undergo fatigue very soon and it is known as olfactory adaptation olfactory adaptation is actually olfactory cells undergoing fatigue olfactory cells undergoing fatigue what exactly happens when we smell something suppose we spray perfume on our, ourselves we smell it immediately because the concentration the chemical of that perfume is triggering these cells after some time we sm stop smelling that same perfume which we uh, spray on ourselves so we think that we forgot to spray the perfume so we spray it again now the concentration of the chemical is double so now the double chemical or concentration is stimulating it after some time we again stop smelling it reason the cells once they get stimulated by a particular concentration of a chemical they do not detect the same concentration or the concentration which is below it and that is called the fatigue of the cells or olfactory adaptations so after spraying the perfume 2 3 times on ourselves we still are not able to smell it but 
people around us think as if you know we are drenched in that uh, perfume because we have double or triple concentration of it and it is the same reason when we want to purchase perfume or any deodorant after smelling every perfume we are given to smell coffee beans so that there is a total different kind of uh, chemical which stimulates our olfactory cells so if we go on smelling perfume after perfume once the cell has been triggered after that it is under fatigue so we will not be able to distinguish between different kinds of smells of those perfumes and that is why once we smell perfume the second we per smell coffee beans so it is a different chemical now when you smell other type of perfume you are able to distinguish between the first order and the second order or the second perfume so this is actually olfactory adaptation so olfactory epithelium or nidarian membrane this is how we are able to detect the sense of smell